varied culture of Lebanon today reflects the influence of the past civilizations that have helped shape it, spanning thousands of years. Originally home to the Phoenicians, but having been occupied and conquered by many others still, their lasting impact has enriched its heritage even more. Lebanon's nature is just as rich and varied as its culture and is well known for its amazing landscapes, its breathtaking sea, mesmerizing mountaintops, and stunning nature whose colors reflect its beauty and diversity. Lebanon was once considered the Paris of the Middle East until a civil war tore it apart and plagued the country from 1975 to 1990. Lebanon's path to recovery has been hindered ever since by continual internal strife marked by an ever-worsening, dysfunctional political system, a recent crippling economic crisis, and external influences that altogether have threatened to crush the spirit of most. Yet despite decades of seemingly insurmountable challenges, some Lebanese have managed to remain positive throughout, especially among its business leaders. Faris Nassif is one of them. He has been living and working in Beirut as an international consultant for the past 26 years and speaks optimistically of his country and its people. Faris Nassif is a Lebanese consulting engineer who founded Design Engineering Partners in 2004. By his mid-30s, he became a millionaire after expanding his startup into the Gulf and European markets. At just 35, he distinguished himself by encrypting aviation solutions for international airports, which led to the implementation of crisis management centers years before the arrival of Internet of Things, or IoT for short. Large scale projects with smart solutions have always been my focus, in particular projects that serve communities ranging from airports and aviation to urban planning, even transportation, infrastructure, and renewable energy. was born in Deir al Amar in the Shouf mountain region of Lebanon, but was raised in Beirut and educated at the reputed Brothers Sacred Heart School from 1977 until 1990, when he graduated with the French baccalaureate. He then attended and graduated from St. Joseph's University in 1995 with a degree in electrical engineering. Soon after, Ferris traveled to France where he also obtained a diploma in macroeconomics and began working with a well-known international company. During his early career, he worked on government programs, implementing value engineering in the transportation and energy sectors before starting his own company, Design Engineering Partners, or DEP for short, in 2004. my first job, from 1996 till 2004, I had the chance to work in a reputable firm and managed to work my way up to a management position, eventually becoming the program manager of Worldwide Airports.
In May 2004, when I had enough PR contacts and experience, I finally found the courage to establish my own consultancy firm. This move was not easy. I had a family and hardly any money. I was just an employee after all. But building the right team around me made all the difference. Quite quickly, the I became we. And I could never have achieved all the work in marketing, travels, research and developments, concepts, design, and production without a great team of partners and dedicated engineers. went out into the world and profited from the growing economy in the Gulf and the Middle East, conquering markets in Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, Oman, Kuwait, and Iraq. Design engineering partners quickly became famous for bringing innovation and savings to its clients. Then we went to Africa, and at the same time, we established our European footprint with DEPE, Design Engineering Partners of Europe. Our technical solutions were well received by the stakeholders, and this gave us more confidence for investing in research and development. As a result of our success and the strategic partnerships that we have created, we are also starting to develop our services in the United States. In line with our growth, our team has grown from just a few to hundreds of full-time engineers. We've developed departments covering architectural, civil, structural, electrical, mechanical, and information technology. DEP also provides construction services that include program and contract management, cost control, and even site supervision. We serve the public and private sectors, managing everything related to urban planning, airports, infrastructure and roads, high-rise buildings, industrial, and even service plans. We create financial portfolios and private equities for investors to help them achieve their targeted returns something that we are really proud of. The most challenging project, and the one that actually built our reputation, was the Airport Operation Management Center. This is an intelligent system that integrates aircraft, passenger, and baggage, complete with smart solutions that optimize airport space, operation flow, time management, and expenditures. Lebanon's national budget is around $14 billion a year, with a GDP of $53 billion, but it also has a total debt of $93 billion, $35 billion of which are external. These numbers lead to a total debt to GDP ratio of 175%, which has drastically lowered its financial credit rating. We have become used to these conditions. But just like the phoenix that dies and rises from the ashes, so too will we. Besides, since our business is with foreign countries, DEP is not affected by the local crisis. The re-emergence of the Lebanese economy depends on the contribution of the diaspora, whose emigration began in the 19th century around the same time of the Industrial Revolution. 
And even though the Lebanese population is currently around 5 million, its diaspora equal around 15 million are across the globe, with country success stories, some of whom are even quite well known. That being said, many people across the country are suffering, and now it's time to help those in need, not to look after the wealthy people. And this is the message. On another note, Lebanon is full of graduates who are talented but are unemployed due to the economic crisis. Our youth are struggling and need help. They are our future, and we must invest in them. With the support of his international contacts, Ferris has been able to convince businessmen from the Lebanese diaspora to give graduates a chance to work remotely. For Ferris, this is a true success story. He now has many working online from Lebanon, covering services such as design engineering, graphic design, IT administration, editing, translation, accounting, and many others. Lebanon needs more than financial aid. That is not a sustainable solution. Instead, we need to create autonomous markets that keep graduates and their brains in Lebanon and allow them to work for the world. This is the message. Give our youth a chance to work in online services. I'm ready to help facilitate this connection and to explain more how it works. Ferris gives as much attention to his family as his business and lives his life to the fullest. This is the story of Ferris Nassif, of one man who built an empire based on his innovative engineering solutions and who showed the world what one can do in order to succeed even in the most difficult of circumstances, offering hope to others attempting to do the same. Beyond his own accomplishments, he is just as committed to investing in the success of young talented Lebanese as well by bringing them online opportunities, but also by challenging the diaspora to rise up and accept this challenge to help in the present need and in the future success of their beloved home country. My message to the world, and especially to the Lebanese descendants living abroad, the diaspora, is this. It's time to give back. Let's make Lebanon the Paris of the Middle East again.